What's up, guys? This is Ashton Bingham. Welcome back to Muse Themes. We have a really exciting new addition to our widget library that I'm going to share with you called Scroll Reveal. It's a widget that allows you to reveal or hide elements on your web page based on its scroll position. So here on our demo, we have just some text and an arrow graphic sitting on a white background. But as soon as I scroll down, it suddenly appears that we're on an entirely new page with all these new elements popping in. And this is done using our scroll reveal widget and can be assigned to just about any element that you could place on your page. It's a really cool and functional effect that you've probably seen on tons of high-end or complex sites, but probably not so much on a Muse site. So if I scroll up and then I come back down slowly, we first get this stylish color overlay and a white text that pops up first. And then a bit further, we get our navigation bar which is great for sites that need an alternate navigation menu that's maybe smaller or larger than what shows on the initial page load. Also, some sites have like one big important hero image and don't necessarily need any navigation visible until the user begins to scroll. Then we have our social links, which has become very common on the web. And sometimes it can be a bit intrusive to throw a whole bunch of share buttons at site visitors too quickly. And this allows you to reveal it as a pinned sidebar after the user scrolls into the content a little bit. And lastly, our handy little back to top button, which is great to save until the user gets a little further down the page to even need to use it. So I'm gonna dive into Muse so we can take a closer look. Now you'll find that the widget itself really isn't complicated to set up. It's more so a matter of properly laying out the content that you want to be affected by this widget. Here we have the project file that Christopher created for our live demo that we just saw. You can see that we have four instances of our scroll reveal widget sitting off to the left applied to a variety of elements on the page here. And we link the two together with the use of a graphic style, similar to many of our other widgets. I can pop open our graphic styles panel, and I can select these various elements. Our nav bar we can see as a graphic style of nav. We have our social sharing group widget off to the side here with a graphic style of social. And additionally, this widget displays the name of the graphic style it's using in its preview here in that green lettering so that you can easily tell which widget applies to which element when you've got multiple uses of this widget on a page. And our general rule of thumb here is that these elements that you're showing or hiding always have to be placed on the page where they're intended to be shown or hidden. The widget itself can be placed anywhere off the canvas like Christopher has done here, but the elements still need to be placed on the page. Just like using regular scroll effects in Muse, it's something that you have to keep in mind as you're designing. However, with this widget, there's no limitation regarding fluid or fixed width sites. You can use this widget across the board regardless of the presence of breakpoints, which is really cool. So what I want to do is start with a blank page, and I'm going to show you the setup from scratch. I'm going to use some of Christopher's elements like the nav bar and the social widget to save time, but I want to dive into the specifics of the widget settings panel a little more. So let's start with the nav bar. I'm going to jump into Christopher's demo again really quick, and we'll select our nav bar, which you may notice in this case is just a state button. We'll copy it, then jump back to our blank page, and we'll paste it on the canvas. So now let's visit our library panel, and we'll drag the widget out onto the page. And before we get into the settings panel, we need to assign a graphic style to our state button. So we're going to select our state button. We'll jump into the graphic styles panel. And in this case, there's already a style applied because I copied it over, but I'm going to go ahead and click this icon to create a new style. And I'll type uh, nav1 and click OK. So now let's jump into the widget settings panel. On our first field, we're going to type our graphic style we just created, nav1. And beneath that, we have a couple of setup options. The first question is asking if we want to show or reveal the content upon scrolling or hide the content upon scrolling. We're going to go ahead and leave this at show for now. Scroll offset sets how many pixels down from the top of the screen you want the effect to take place. So let's go ahead with uh, 300 pixels for now for our nav bar. And these last three settings allow you to customize the transition of the reveal or hide. Transition type, you can leave this at the standard fade or you can have it slide in from the sides. The speed, of course, you can increase or decrease. And the easing controls kind of the flow of the action. Now I can already preview this in a browser, but before I do that, I'm going to zoom out of my page and I'm going to add a small rectangle way down on the page in order to mimic content so the browser will actually let me scroll down the page. There. So let's give this a quick preview. 
and our page starts blank as we'd expect. And as I scroll down, there we go. Our nav comes into view. Now back into Muse. You may be wondering why a state button. Well, it's not required that you use a state button. It was set up this way in this particular case because we have more than one element here that we want to be reflected in this scroll reveal effect. We have this brown header bar, as well as our text box with our hyperlinks. But one thing to keep in mind here is that state buttons are designed to trigger all elements within it at the same time when you hover over it. So if you're using hover effects on each navigation text link, you would need to place each link in its own state button within the main state button. Another option would be to use a separate widget for each nav link and the header bar, but that would only be necessary, like I said, if you're going to use individual hover states for each link item. So now let's go ahead and give this a shot on our social sharing group widget. I'm going to jump back over to Christopher's demo, and we'll copy it, and we'll paste it on our page. Into our graphic styles panel, I'll create a new style again for our new page. We'll call it uh, social1. Now inside the settings panel for our social widget, we have this set to a vertical layout, but I definitely recommend checking out the tutorial for this widget and seeing all the various ways that you can actually display this. Christopher also applied a corner pinning to this, so I'll go ahead and do that as well. So now we'll just need to drag out another scroll reveal widget. Inside the panel, we'll type social1. And we'll give this one a slightly different entrance. We'll go ahead and set the scroll offset to 500 so it comes in a little later after the nav bar. Now for transition type, we'll go ahead and do slide from left since we have this placed on the left side of our page. And we'll go ahead and increase this transition speed which will actually slow down the effect. So we'll go ahead and make this 600. There. We'll do another browser preview. Our blank page once again. And if we scroll, we get our nav first and then our social icons easing in shortly after. Now let me jump back to Christopher's demo again and we'll grab our back to top arrow, which is just an arrow image graphic placed on the bottom of the page, and paste it on our page. Now let's scroll to the bottom and we'll place this near the bottom corner. And once again, we'll create a graphic style. I'll go with top one. And we'll drag out a new widget from the library. Enter our graphic style of top one. And in this case, we're gonna to wanna to set the transition type to slide from bottom. And we'll give it an offset of 500 and a speed of 500 as well. Preview it in the browser. And there we go, we have it sliding in from the bottom when we scroll. Now the last thing I wanna cover is the color overlay effect that we saw in the live demo. All we have to do for that is create a rectangle on our page. We'll go ahead and give it a color fill. And we'll set it to full width. Now I'm going to bring the top of it up to the very top of the workspace. And we'll extend the bottom of it way down to make sure that the whole screen is covered. And lastly, we'll give it a center top pinning to ensure that it remains on the screen as the user scrolls down. Then we'll assign it a graphic style. We'll go with fill one. And we'll drag out our widget once more and enter our style of fill one. And I want the overlay to come in a little sooner, so we'll set the scroll offset to 20. We'll leave the transition to fade, but let's go ahead and slow it down to 500. Now lastly, we want to change the layer settings here since our overlay is covering our other content. So we'll go ahead and select it and we can open up our layers panel here on the right, and we can see our rectangle element selected here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this all the way to the bottom. Perfect. So now it's sitting behind all the other elements. So we'll preview this in the browser. And there we go, everything is functioning beautifully. Now one more thing I wanna mention back in Muse. There's a few things you wanna consider when using an overlay. As I mentioned, all the elements need to sit on the page where they're going to be reflected in the browser. And as you just saw, using an overlay can be a bit cumbersome on your workspace and it can sometimes cover up text or images or other things. So if you're going to use an overlay, I'd suggest maybe getting it all set up and then just moving the overlay off the canvas for the remainder of your designing until everything is all in its place. Then once you're finished with everything, you can move it back and make sure it's layered properly. 
So that's our scroll reveal widget, guys. We're really excited about this one, and we think it's a stylish game changer in regards to functionality in Muse. So please have some fun with it, and be sure to let us know if you run into any snags. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.